How's it going, doggy people? I hope you all are doing well. Welcome back to part three of working with Cooper. Um, we've been working on him fixing pulling and leash reactivity and craziness. So now we're going to go outside and apparently walk by a new dog that's arriving. So I don't know what he's doing okay. now. With dogs like this, you got to manage their excitableness. Okay? Now, see, none of this was outside. He was very calm outside. He comes back inside. He's more comfortable, more excitable. I like to hold him at bay a little bit. I would just stand so up and walk away if he's getting natural excited. natural inclination, not with me necessarily. So he's fighting it because he likes to hold the collar a lot. This dog tries to fight and mouth, and then he just forcefully holds him there. You know what it would help? As I said in the very first video I did with him and Cooper, let go of his collar. Leave him alone. Teach him that hands around his collar are not anything to get excited about. You don't do it this way. Necessarily. If this was a brand new person or the owners, he's right here. He's in their face. He's probably hitting Then their stand face. up and walk away. He's pushing them over. Not with me because I'm the boss. No, you're not the boss. You're just some over-controlling human that he has to be forced to live with for a couple of weeks. You're not the boss of squat. That mouth on my hand, you can actually feel his whole energy. Like, like his muscles and everything. Yeah, he's excited. Like, all excitable. See, I would okay, love to play with this little dog. guy. We're gonna see that dog I would love to work with him. Oh, dog, good stretch. No oh, good yummy. No collars, no prong collars. Yeah, he acts like he's all special because he doesn't use treats or special collars, but he still uses compulsion. He just lets the dog go to the end of the leash and he pops it hard on a flat buckle collar. That is it. This dog is still already showing stress with his flat tongue. You know, his lips are back. A little bit of Maybe whale eyes. I mean, that could just be the, the way he looks. I've been talking to you, about you know, his skin can kind of drag down a little bit. There's a reason this guy is going to succeed. And I believe, I know he is going to succeed. All right, let's. let's he would succeed there. just fine without you doing all of what you're doing. We've got a dog set up up here that he has not. So he didn't show us going through the door again. So how many corrections did it take for him to stay there as he walked out the door? Not yet. We're going to start walking. I've let him be in front of me the whole way out here. So that he is not perfect. So he can You're set him up for failure. He can reinforce the wrong behavior so he can make him look worse. That way when he pops him, he gives, he gets a much better before and after result. Dog being this dog is already you, really your stressed. Dog does not have leash reactivity or isn't crazy when they see other dogs is not the worst thing in the world. When I go on these walks to show you guys, I'm like, keep the dog here because, no, you're good, because... You're about to, you're going to see a dog later, and if they're up here, how are you going to get them? Oh, when you see a dog is when you're going to start to go, okay, let me get control. No, no, you got to get control early. So that's why I'm all hardcore early in the walk. Which is just stupid. Just like like Jeff Galman says, you got to do the pre-walk punisher. Before your dog even steps outside, you got to punish them. Give them harsh correction, give them a shock collar or e-collar correction, so that they're afraid the entire time. God forbid something happens. If, if you're afraid of something happening and you have to correct them ahead of time, that means that you haven't done the work or put the time in to work with your dog appropriately. The dog should not have to pay for your ignorance or your just laziness. Because you're about to see a dog. So now, I get that everyday owners deal with this. So I always try to tell them, walk in areas, small areas, go for a short walk and work on loose leash and work on them paying attention to you and work in areas where there's not other dogs. Try your best to control that. If you can, you know, if you can't, then just work your best to manage that behavior. Yes, is act, look, oh, look at this, look at this. Yeah, he's this. pulling a sniff, so I would, you know, use, uh, I would move more to the right, and I would try to move this dog to the right, you know, to put pressure on the side of his neck so he knows to give in to pressure, and then as soon as he gave me a couple of steps, I would loosen it, and then as long as it's on a loose leash, this dog can go sniff. If he goes to pool again, I would do the same thing. Two-step dance. If you want to know how I use uh, teach a dog to walk on a loose leash, I have two different videos showing that. We're over this. Ouch! God dang it, dude. What did I do there? So he set the dog up for failure. He let him walk here and here and here and ignore it and let that behavior be reinforced so that way he could pop him hard here and ambush him out of nowhere. Because he's going to say that you know the dog doesn't know. He was allowing him to sniff, so the dog said it's okay to pull to go sniff. Rewatch it. I don't Hit need to rewatch it. Button. No. I released the leash, then I gave a correction. You can't give a correction on a tight leash. So he needs slack. 
to pop the dog. I released it and I gave a correction. This guy will hunker down and will he'll go, he'll pull the owner over. Well, that's natural. That's, it, I'm not saying it's good, but that's a dog's natural instinct, you know, opposition reflex. They feel something holding them back and they really want to go for this. And the more you pull them back, the more they want to go for it. I mean, I walk a couple of pugs that do that. And these pugs are pretty strong. So I imagine this guy's pretty strong, but that's why instead of pulling back on their neck, I move them sideways. I take them off balance and I, it's easier for me to teach them to give me the right answer. He'll pull kids over. He'll pull anybody over. Okay, well, it's not that? his fault. I mean, it's just the owner's... He's just being a dog. And, and the people who have regularly walked him have not learned how to teach him not to pull. And I always say in an appropriate manner. Meaning that you shouldn't have to rely on force to teach a dog not to pull. That's just my opinion. That's one of my little keys to success. You want to make the feeling Ouch. of him going, I'm going to hunker down. And then you start to pull. So and unnecessary. Go, no, 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 no. I'm going where I want to go. I released it. Then I gave him a correction. And then he was. Then he went. Oh my god. Gotta... So if a dog is really pulling and digging in, then I will just stand there. They're not going to get any further. I will move to the side again, get them off balance, and then I'll stand there, maybe on a shorter leash, and I'll stand with them. Say they're pulling to go to this this hydrant over here, and I'm standing right here, and he's digging in. I'll move. I'll take him in a couple of steps, so he's no longer digging in, and we'll just stand there. And he can pull, and if he pulls, I'll just gently bring him back and loosen that leash and bring him back and loosen, you know, not enough to make him, you know, not enough slack for him to, like, fly forward and clothesline himself. And we will gently take a couple of steps until he can calmly go and sniff this hydrant. And that would be the reward for him. Oh, my God. you got to shock these guys out of what they're doing. Okay, we I don't think you need to here. shock a dog out of anything. Unnecessary, there's you know, moments, maybe, when a dog is going absolutely crazy and go and ape and they're just you know freaking out and sometimes we need to drag them away or we need to do something to get their attention um but very 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 rarely do i need to do that leaving me okay ouch ouch oh he's ouch. the dog ouch and we're going the other way now that you can do this without popping your dog you can simply just walk the other direction and as soon as that, and that leash probably going to be a little bit tight because you're dragging him. As soon as that leash loosens, you can reward. Again, for me, I would have stopped early. As soon as he sees that dog, I would have stopped, checked his engagement with me, rewarded, and stayed below threshold. Uh, based on that, he cannot meet the other dog. He saw a dog from 100 yards away. That dog is 100 yards away. Now I work with dogs that are aggressive. Zeus. That has been so reactive and crazy a hundred yards away. More than that. And he was reactive and we just walked back until he was no longer reacting or pulling. I'm going to go back a couple seconds because as soon as he stops, watch this dog's body language. He stops and this dog's head goes down. We'll go back a couple more seconds. He saw a dog from a hundred yards away. Him. That dog is a hundred yards away. Stops, head now, goes down because he was expecting... Me. The pot. His tongue is curling over. He's getting more and then stressed. He said, "Yeah, but there's a dog." And I started to go this way. He said, "Yeah, but there's a dog." Sniff. I, said, I don't. Care. It doesn't matter. We're going this way. So you can make it rewarding to go the other direction. The goal is, the goal should be that you are more rewarding than the other dog or anything in the environment. That's the whole purpose behind training. Yeah, I, in, in my opinion, that I think you know that you your goal is to be more interesting than anything in the yard, and it shouldn't be because. Your dog fears leaving you because you're you're going to cause you're going to be the causer of pain or correction. They should want to follow you because they want to, not because they're afraid not to. Is it within criteria? He's checking in, it's within criteria. but no reward. His only reward is not getting popped on the leash and drug is around. He leaving me? Oh, he's with me. You know he acts so you know, like hey, look at that. You know we got some good results, dude. You're just yanking this dog around and forcing him to follow you. That's it. It's nothing special. This goodness, and if we get goodness passing this goodness. dog, is simply because of that one thing I did. So that pull down there at the corner, but also... No, it's not that one thing. It's the several corrections you've given him throughout this walk here, and this dog is learning. And it's not a simple... That doesn't make it okay. Because he walks with you like this 95% of the time, and you only have to correct him 5% of the time, it doesn't matter. When it doesn't matter the dog. dog. They said, don't care. Yeah, I'm not going this way with you. And I said, no, 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 we're going this way. And then he, now he's like, 
He's cold. not saying that. Yeah, no, I'm not going. He's saying, hey, there's a dog there. I'm excited. He's way over threshold. You're no longer in his brain. He's going to hind brain. He's reactive. He's sees a squirrel. He wants to chase it. You know, you pop him. He goes back into front brain. He says, okay, I better pay attention to this guy because he's going to correct me. That's not how I work with dogs. That's not how I recommend you work with dogs. If, if you want any kind of relationship, meaningful relationship and trust, that's not how I suggest you work with them. Checking in with me? Checking in with me? He's not really checking in with you. I think he was looking at the environment. He's sniffing. He's blowing through his lips. He's checking in the environment. He, if he was looking and checking in with you, I think he would have turned his head a little bit more. Pop. Ah, god dang it, dude. <sighs> <laughs> Don't it's like, dude, what's going on? This is just my natural reaction. And that's what I imagine the dog's reaction is. Ouch, that hurts. I don't care if it's on a flat buckle collar or not. That hurts. He has leverage. He has height. He has upward strength versus this dog is on the floor or, you know, lower on the ground. God. Okay. Look at that. Look at that is so telling. You can't tell me that the owners want this kind of behavior. Okay. The dog lowers his body. He gives a lip lick. He looks at him fearingly. His, his top line is curved. This is fear. And he's staring him in the eyes. If you want this, then follow Joel. Absolutely ridiculous. Is it within criteria? But it's, yeah. it's the, in the name of training, so it's okay. Like the people at Cypress Arrow trying to act like they use a crop. Like, it's not going to hurt the dog. And the lady slaps it against her leg several times. Oh, it doesn't hurt. It's just to tap them and get their attention. Yet, you have somebody, you know, you tap it on your own leg, you know how it feels. Yet, you have somebody who's lifting their hand and smacking the dog in the face. That's a lot more distance from tapping your own leg. It's just ridiculous. Oh boy. So he's whining, he's getting excited. So right here, I would already stop. And I would work on him standing still and focusing on me and giving rewards. You know, the f using positive reinforcement and treats and everybody says, oh, I have to rely on treats. That would be much quicker. You would get much quicker results without ever having to touch the dog or correct them. You would get much quicker results than you would with this. I promise you, because I've done it time and time and time and time again. You get much better results. Your dog is actually learning. They focus on you. They enjoy it better. But if you want to keep doing this, go ahead. Dog's right there. Lip lick. Leave it. Good. Boy. Good. Could have at least rewarded. But no, his only reward is not getting corrected. I think all good. We're going to let these two meet. Oh, lovely. God, he just stopped and this dog's head went down. We're going to let these two meet. Head goes down, fearful, looking up, fearful, lip lick. Oh my gosh, Joel, he seems scared or... So he's aware of it, and he chooses to ignore it. Some people say that. Dude, this dog, this is the only way to get this dog chill. No, it is not. That is an absolute lie. That is a bald-faced lie, and you know it. And he's, if he believes that, then he's an idiot. He is just a an absolute liar. This is not the only way to do this. In his mind, maybe, the, I guarantee you, I could work with this dog, and he's been working for, on the video, 17 minutes, you know, I could get this dog to walk by this other dog with me in the same amount of time without ever having to correct him. I could get him, at least, at the very least, in that yard, I could get him to come back to me from the fence, off leash. And that's not because I'm special or, or because I'm a cheater or, I mean, you can call me whatever you want, you know, but I use positive reinforcement. I use meaning reinforcement for the dog that is positive. So using treats, using his kibble, using a ball, using a toy, whatever he finds most reinforcing, using my body. It's, and it's because I have experience in doing that. I practice. The dog will tell me when I'm doing it wrong. If I'm not able to get his attention from just walking away, then maybe I need to run away. Maybe I need to do that. And then we fade away from that behavior. Once I reinforce him coming back to me enough, I don't have to be exaggerated because I don't expect the owner to have to run around all day. I don't want to run around all day to call my dog back. But that's where we start. 
and we fade from that. We fade from the the uh, you know food reward. You know now with me recall, I always want a high value reward nine out of ten times because that's the life saving cue. The one time you don't have it is you know you still want your dog to come back to you. So it may go from food or a treat to a ball or something else. You know, but in the beginning, I'm going to have a reward from every single time until it is 100% reliable. So this is just absolutely, that's an absolute lie. This is not about treats. This can't be about treats. It, it certainly can be. So then this is just about force. This is about compulsion. This is about having power over the dog. This is about your ego. This is about your ignorance. The fact that you straight up lie, like so many balance trainers do. I just call them straight up compulsion trainers. They all lie saying you can't get this with treats. You know what? You're absolutely right. I cannot get a dog to be fearful like this with treats, with positive reinforcement, because that's the whole goal behind it. The, the dog I work with, he would not look like this. You're absolutely right. You would be happy. He would be comfortable. He could still be calm, but he would be much more comfortable. He would be focusing on me by now as soon as he sees that dog. Charlie, go right here. I'm going to go right here. Okay. Just the fact that he... He tries to, he lies to the people watching. He lies to his owners, the owners that, that pay him, that they, they're at their wits end. They don't know what else to do. So he says, yeah, no, you're not going to get this with treats because I'm sure they've worked with treat trainers in the past and those trainers either didn't have good timing or the people didn't put enough time in to work with their dog. And so they're too busy. They're too lazy. They don't know enough. They don't have enough time or experience. They want quick results. They don't like how long it takes. So they go to him and he says, yeah, no, that's, it's the method that, that failed. If the method failed, then you weren't using positive reinforcement. Leave it. Good. Yeah, what? go ahead and abuse your animal like this and tell me that that's the only way to do it. Teach them learn helplessness. Go ahead and do that if you want. And try to tell me that positive reinforcement and treats cannot teach this animal. Watch me, guys. In these videos, watch me. Doesn't Jesus. Really Ouch. Doesn't really God what the dang it, dude. Wants to do. I'm giving this guy six feet of freedom. To hang himself with. You're giving him six feet to hang himself with. As soon as he gets to the end, you have that much more leverage. If he had a four-foot leash, he wouldn't have as much leverage. If he had a two-foot leash, he wouldn't have as much leverage. He can smell the air. He can do a number of things. There are certain things... And so long as he's within your controlling bubble... He cannot do. He cannot leave me. Ouch. Teach him what to do because clearly he does not understand enough to not leave you. You're telling me that treats can't accomplish this? I guarantee that treats would accomplish this way back at the house. He would be walking perfectly fine by me this entire time and I wouldn't have to have a treat right in front of his nose. That is bribery. That's not what positive reinforcement is. The majority of treat trainers that I've seen, that I follow, that actually are good trainers, don't have a, a piece of food in front of his face. If you have to do that the entire time, then you need to go back to school, you need to work on it, you need to learn, because that's not true proper training. And I wouldn't have to be giving him a treat every five seconds. Maybe every couple of minutes, maybe allowing him to sniff and then going back to walking loose on leash. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. He cannot leave me and go this way to smell the dog? That was unnecessary. He's just doing that to be macho. This dog did not need that correction. He's fearful. He cannot leave me and go this way to smell the dog? So, see, he took out extra slack than he needed to. And look at every time he does it, he has furrowed brows. He's upset. He's taking out his frustrations on this dog because the dog is not listening to him. Oh, my God. I'm giving him a ton of freedom. No, you're not, because you take it away. You take away about two feet of it. God damn. God. Kick oh, my God. Okay. Dude, I'm about to have a brain aneurysm. Jesus. Okay. So first, picture is worth a thousand words. Look at this dog. He kneed him in the face. Okay, so when he pulls the dog next to him, when the dog pulls away, he says, you come next to me. When he's next to him, he knees him in the face. This dog is lip licking. We're going to go back and watch that. So he yanks him, lip lick. Then God. he turns into him randomly, knees him in the face. 
The dog is scared. He doesn't know what's going on. He didn't tell the dog anything. He just knees him in the face and ambushes him. Oh my god. This guy's a trainer. He worked with killer whales. Jesus. See him walk into my leg? Your dog has to know where you Because you didn't tell him otherwise. He didn't walk into your leg. You walked into him. He's been used to walking straight. You've been doing outside turns with him. Now you do an inside turn. You kick him in the feet. Okay. He's been used to walking outside turns with you. Now you do an inside turn. He doesn't know you're doing that. You don't tell him anything and you knee him in the face. That was unnecessary. It's like teaching someone to drive a car and every time they do something wrong, they've never driven a car before. They don't know how to operate it. Every time they do something wrong, you smack them on the hand. How are they supposed to learn? It's by trial and error. They have no ability to even do the right thing or work towards the right thing to avoid correction because you're simply just not telling them what to do. They, they can only learn by trial and error and by getting corrected. It's idiotic. You are at all times. If you want to be mean, this is the stuff you got to do. <laughs> if you want to be him, you're going to be mean. You want to be me? Okay, be mean. You shouldn't want to be him. He is not a good trainer. Leave it. Poor thing. Good boy. The leave it tone. I haven't trained a full leave it with him, but the tone based on... See, now his tongue is flopping out to the side. He's that much more stressed. He's hot. He's... He doesn't even seem too hot from the way he's been panting. He's just... He's much more stressed, and so his wet tongue is hanging out and I say it like that because I refer to horses with wet saddle blanket uh, and the same thing is kind of I use it for dogs but with a horse you can get a wet saddle blanket out of two two ways. You take a horse on a five mile walk going up and down you know obstacles and in the mountains and you go for a nice trail ride and you're, and you're having a good time they've gotten a good sweaty horse and you come back and take it off or you take a horse and put him in a ram pen for 15 minutes and you chase the crap out of them and whip at them and spur them and do all this in 15 minutes they'll be sweating and make that blanket wet so you so same with dogs you can have a panting tired out dog that's mentally exhausted from 15 minutes of this or from a two mile walk because he, without any of this everything you've seen me do from that office and beyond makes is this guy go unnecessary go oh i better watch this guy yeah this guy's unpredictable he's afraid of you he doesn't trust you he doesn't care about you i don't even look at him he's not I'm even checking in with him anymore right now leave it Poor because thing. i sense that he's going to be good this channel because he's has easy. 100 000 subscribers because of this attitude it's not even what joel did on leaf fair what it's because people will see past that because you get results and they don't know what else to do or they don't want to take the time to do it, to follow Kiko Pup, or, or even Zach George, you know, to follow positive reinforcement style. That's why you have so many subscribers, is because they will see past that, because they forget about the bad, because there's, there's results. And they say, oh, yeah, and the way you talk, you say, oh, I don't care, you know, it doesn't hurt him, he's not mad, I'm not being mean. You know, I just heard it, I just... I just pop them once, then you don't have to do it again. Yeah, that sounds pretty nice. But the dog, it, it's, if you have to do anything once for anything to never do it again, that is a very harsh correction. And it's a very dangerous training model. And obviously unnecessary. What Joel did on the leaf there. It's based on an attitude that you can learn. You don't need to have any attitude with your dog. Either. Look at how stressed this dog is. You don't need to have any attitude with your dog other than, hey, we are a team. And I'm going to be doing the best that I can to keep you safe and happy and healthy. And the dog is just going to be, hey, I'm a dog and I love you because I'm a dog. And I'm not going to, I don't do like. You need to have more respect for these animals. He doesn't have any respect for these animals. Like it's energy. It's good. I'm telling you what I do and how I do it. But you have to have the attitude. Okay, let's let him meet. Meaning you have to not care about your animal's emotional well-being. Or emotional state you have to have the attitude of I'm the boss and you're gonna listen to me slave master okay so he's gonna meet the dog does he have to does he meet the dog does he have to come away when I ask him to come away does your dog have to come away when we ask yes are there consequences when they don't Jesus yes. so he's letting you know he's gonna pop it just like over there 
he's doing all this without even teaching the dog. The dog had never seen the other dog before behind a fence, and now he's doing it outside of the fence. Because that works out so well. Sit. Stay. Act like we're... God, this dog Hi, is how so are you? Good. You want to let our dog meet? Okay. This is the process. Oh my Meeting gosh, that's so cute. I don't know if that's part poodle, or if that's like, like another dog, or if that's just a really fat poodle. Or just a really, really long-haired poodle, but it's adorable. <laughs> I love it. If the other so cute. It. Okay, let's go see your friend. Now, one thing I will say. I've covered the question before. It's always important to ask the owner, of course. Can you say hello? And also, so you get consent from the owner. And also get consent from the other dog. Read the other dog's body language. Which, of course, he wouldn't do because he doesn't care. Make sure this other dog seems comfortable to greet. If this dog were laying down, looking away, lip licking, I would not let my dog go meet because I don't want to invade their space. So something very important. You know, don't let your pushy dog go and, and take advantage of a dog that's nervous and feels trapped on leash. So he's kind of staring. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of lip licks. Penny, she's so nice. See, this dog's a little bit fearful. He's kind of getting in their space. So I'm not saying he needs to be popped, but I would maybe kind of walk him away or I would call him away. I would get over here by his shoulder, by the peripheral of his eyesight um if i were working with a horse it'd be in front of the drive line and i would start backing away and getting his attention to come to me off of this distraction she's so nice okay so this dog's a little bit nervous so i would not allow him to go following this dog around sniffing this is how a fight can break out this dog's even fearful of him he's unneutered cooper come ouch how was my cue was it loud enough? Dude, it doesn't matter about your cue. The dog doesn't understand what it means. All he understood was that you popped him. All the neighbors could hear that cue. It was so darn loud. It Did doesn't matter how loud or quiet you are. I could say that to Adonis. I could call him at a whisper across the house, and he could still hear it. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I kind of question his hearing now. He's getting hes a little old man now, but... <laughs> But, um, but I mean, he can hear the treat bag, you know, from a mile away or opening a yogurt container. So I think he's probably, you know, still, he has a little bit of selective hearing. But, you know, either way, it's not about how loud or quiet you are. It's about whether the dog understands what's being asked of them. And they can, whether or not they can actually show that behavior in this environment, which we know he can't. Opportunity to come to me? Yes. Did he make a choice, his own choice, to say, I heard you, but I'm not doing it? No, he did not make a choice. He was too distracted than the other dog. I don't know how long you've been working with this, but this case, we don't know how long you've been working with him, with this cue, for him to come back. This is a whole new environment. You're at Disneyland, and your parents tell you, hey, come here and, and do your math homework. This dog is not going to leave Disneyland to go back to you, especially when you've been as aggressive as you have been. If you had a relationship with him, he would happily go back. He did not make a choice to ignore you and say, screw you, I'm going to go sniff this dog. He did not. Uh, he does not have an understanding and a buildup of the behavior to come back to you from this dog because you haven't actually taught him that. Or you yes. haven't taught it to him long enough. So he says yes, I he say did. no. And there's corrections for that. Consequences sit. for that, corrections for that. Cooper, sit. Oh, Jesus. So this dog was confused because, yeah, we, we, know, we know Sid, apparently, when we don't because there's a car going by, there's a camera person, there's another person, there's dog, we're in this area. But apparently he knows Sid. And so since he knows it in this guy's mind, that's okay for him to go ahead and sit. be aggressive with this dog. Cooper, sit. He looks at him like, huh? That would, and before he used his hand to lure him. Now he's not luring his hand. He's not using his hand anymore. And watch this dog's facial expression. Reaches for that leash, pulls him down, shoves his pelvis down to the ground. Poor dog just freaks out. Say, you want to meet? Okay, ready? If anybody ever touched my dog like that, they wouldn't. But if they ever did, I would be all over them. Okay. Lip yeah, lick, lip lick. Friend. Now he's trying to that's avoid the dog. He's unneutered. He loves it. He's all into it. We're gonna let him do it He's for a minute. puppy. Oh, the dog, no. oh my gosh, we're on a walk. The dog doesn't want to meet my dog. You got to call your dog away. Your dog Agreed. shouldn't do what he just did. Absolutely, but you also let him do that the first time. I know this dog. Oh, look at look at the pole. Look at the pole. 
Yeah, because you're allowing him to pull. You can walk away now when this dog is further away and it would make it easier. This dog is now creating a draw. I think it's just a very fat poodle, <laughs> but it's adorable. I love it. You're creating a draw with this dog here. And so you're making it harder for him. Have this dog move away and then you can walk him away and then reinforce there. Loose. Cooper, come. Good what boy. What a good boy, Cooper. He's now, did he come easier this time because of the other correction? Possibly, but I think it also could be because this dog sat down, so there's less smelling to smell. You know, it sat down, taking away all the good stuff to smell, so he said, uh, you know, oh, okay, this guy is in more of my attention now. Energetic, smart dog. A lot of your dogs are energetic and smart. All dogs are smart. A lot of humans are stupid. My recall from smelling her a while ago, or, yeah, and earlier when he was smelling, he was smelling her more in the, like, groin area, like in front of the leg, under the flank area. Um, so there's a lot more smells there. He could have been smelling right up in her butt, in her business, you know, but she sat down. And so he said, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to sit here and keep sniffing until you stand up again. Go was the reason he just came away from a female dog when he was in the middle of smelling was because of that correction before that. I don't necessarily think only because of that. I think it was mainly, in my opinion, because she sat down. You'll see a lot of dogs when they're, you know, a female's in heat and she's kind of playing hard to get with the male and he sniffs. As soon as she sits down, he stops trying to sniff her butt and he walks away. She stands up and runs away again. He goes to sniff her butt. And as soon as she sits down, you know, he's not going to get much smell with her sitting. I think that was the main thing that made it easy for him to walk away. So now it's not fair because she's calling him in and causing a reaction. Or I'm sorry. She's calling him in to set him up for a correction. Cooper, come. Good, Good boy. boy. Good boy, Good boy, Cooper. Luke. All right, guys. It's hard for me to kind of explain how important doing it like I just did it is. I don't think it's important at all. I think you can certainly get by without ever listening to a lick of advice this gives. Unless you want, if you just care about results, then, I mean, do it like him. But I don't recommend With it. With a dog like this. You a dog like, he's easy. Are you kidding me? He's not even reactive. He says leash reactivity. This dog is not leash reactive. Trust me. You want to see leash reactive? Check out Zeus on my channel. Take half measures. You can't. Go, yeah, I'll do that, but I won't do that. It all works together. No, it's about a process, not an event. So if I have a dog that's leash reactive, first we get them to not pull on leash and be loose on leash. Then we work on getting them desensitized to dogs. Then we put it together, and you work your way down to that point. You don't just do it all at once, because if you try to teach multiple things, the animal can only learn one thing at a time. So if you're trying to teach a dog a complex behavior, then you should teach them, you know... If you want to teach them down on recall, then you have to teach them first to lay down. You have to teach them to come. You have to teach them to come to a certain spot and stop and then lay down, you know, from a distance. And all of this, you have to work at a distance from all of this stuff. So it, it's too difficult for the animal if you're trying to teach them even in one session, sit, down, stay, come, all that, you know, just work on one behavior for a short period. Come, take a break, come back, work on another behavior. And I hope, hopefully you're seeing that it's not really, it's not that hard. That was unnecessary. He's just, again, doing this to show off. It's, it's not hard. It's simple rules. Of course it's not hard. It's easy. Like I said, it's easy to correct a dog and get results like this. I cannot do it because I care too much about the animal's well-being, physical and emotional well-being. It's I mean what I say, and there's mm -hmm. a consequence when you don't do it. I'm also very clear. It's about clarity. No, you're not. You're just a straight up liar and you try to hide things. I mean, yes, you're clear that you correct them, but the way you say things, your actions and your words do not match. You're very clear and you're, if I needed this, that would be very clear because we could see exactly what you're showing us, but you don't how always were, tell us that. How were my leave it cues? Were they loud enough for him to hear? It doesn't matter if they're loud enough for him to hear. It matters if he understands what you're saying. Did you actually teach him to leave it? Or is, are you relying on this leash pop? Yes. How was my Cooper come? Was it loud enough for him to hear? Good boy. So we're going to end this here. I hope you can uh, have learned something from this uh, trilogy, I guess. 
um, from a 17 minute long video. There's three parts, but um, let me know what you learned, if you noticed something that I didn't, um, and what you would like to see next time. And I hope to have a, a an interesting you know video coming up about trying to solve a puzzle uh, while expecting corrections and how that changes the, the, the processing of the mind versus not having any corrections at all. Um, so thanks again for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, until next time, stay positive.